10 minutes of non-stop news and no wait weather starts now. Good to have you with us tonight. You are looking at damage to Eli Court and 48th Street in Sioux Falls, where four homes were badly damaged by severe storms that moved through Sioux Falls overnight. And the hardest hit is in southwest Sioux Falls, almost to the T. Ellis Road. And we are covering all of the angles of this storm tonight, not just in Sioux Falls, but around the viewing area. We begin with Brian Allen and Katie Talby, who are live where the worst damage is. Yeah, Nancy, if you spend any time in this area, you will quickly be amazed by what you see in here. It really does kind of leave you speechless when we pulled into the neighborhood. You, you drive around this area and your jaw almost hits the floor. We've heard stories today about boats being lifted right off their trailers and tossed through the air like they were nothing. We've heard from other people who literally had portions of their home collapse right around them. In fact, that's the story that Gloria Hunter was able to share with us this afternoon. We spent some time talking to her today. Take a listen to what she told us can't get in my front door. It is not the Friday Gloria Hunter was expecting. This is what she now has to deal with. Part of her home's roof is gone and the garage has collapsed. Her day started off on the wrong foot. I woke up last night to my house shaking. Shaking from howling winds. Gloria says it sounded like a freight train. Water began pouring into her bathroom. She didn't know why until she opened her garage door and looked outside. Uh, then I Went up to check the rest of my house and came out and had no garage left. Most of what had been her garage is lying in her side yard along with part of her roof. Her standing. garage door is lying on her car. Surprisingly, a Harley parked inside wasn't touched. Amazing. It's crazy. I never thought anything like this would happen to me. And but it has happened. Gloria says it's surreal. What she normally sees on TV, she can see just by standing outside her house. She is dumbfounded by the level of damage in her neighborhood. They're saying it wasn't a tornado, but I can't see how this much damage could happen just from the wind. So. Gloria is working on getting a dumpster here to dump everything into. And how about this? Gloria is in the process of yeah, selling this, this house. <laughs> she was two weeks away from closing. Now she doesn't know where she will That's live we'll or if weeks. the buyers still want the house. Despite the problems she is now facing, she tells us she feels fortunate. Her house was damaged, but um, she wasn't injured. And, yeah, we were lucky, really lucky. Doug Blomker is the assistant emergency manager for Minnehaha County. Uh, one of the things that Gloria Hunter wondered in that story, Doug, and you have to wonder when you drive around this area and see the damage, we're sure this wasn't a tornado. This was just wind. This was directly wind, yes, correct. Uh, the National Weather Service did not show any rotation uh, on their radars last night indicating any type of tornado. This was uh, straight line wind that came through last night. And about how fast were these winds going? This is interesting because we discussed this a little before airtime. How, how, how much were these winds howling? Well, the National Weather Service termed this as a wet microburst. Essentially, the winds drop from very high up down to the ground, and what they're terming this is is at minimum 60 miles an hour, more likely in this area around 80 to 100 miles an hour. Wow, and Doug, this all happened overnight, so how did you guys get clued into the severity of what was going on out here? Basically, we check with the Weather Service constantly as far as knowing what our potential for severe weather is. Um, Normally, if we have something like this come in, they will give us a call, either myself or Lynn Young, our director, uh, inform us that we've got severe weather moving into the area and make us aware if we need to get weather spotters out or how we need to respond in that situation. Doug, while we've got you here, uh, we know that the Red Cross was out here overnight, the early morning hours of today. We don't think any families needed to, to use shelter provided by the Red Cross, but they're still available tonight to offer assistance. Is that right? To best of my knowledge, yes, they are. I guess if anybody needs any type of help, they can contact the Red Cross. They will be able to direct them to whatever services they might need. All right, Doug Blomker is the Assistant Emergency Manager for Minnehaha County. A lot to see here, unfortunately, today for Doug and the folks in his office. Thanks for taking the time Thank to you. join us here at 5. We appreciate it, Doug.